Apparently, some of you are quite into the Bevanfield reviews, so... Alright, let's go back to the UK's Dingo Pictures equivalent with their take on Rapunzel. So, uh, yeah, this is quite the DVD case, isn't it? Apparently Aladdin and Beauty and the Beast were the popular titles from Pevenfield. If you can believe that. As far as I know, Silver Series only ever released these two Bevanfield films because after that they were too busy with classic kids titles like Dream Master, The Erotic Invader. These cardboard sleeve releases of Bevanfield movies came with the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail is a tabloid newspaper from the UK if you're unfamiliar, and after they let you know important things like how fat you are, you can really make your day complete by watching a horrible movie. There were loads of titles though that came with this and other newspapers. You could even get Golden Films movies. Oh boy. Though eventually the Daily Mail boss said free DVDs are madness and that they're like injections of yippee beans. Wonderful quote, but I can't say anything about these DVDs really makes me feel like I've had my daily injection of yippee beans. These DVDs were also released by Castle Home Video and were apparently a part of the crummy series Tell Me a Story. This is code for even lazier than usual. Every single one of these Tell Me a Story Bevanfield films start with the same little ditty. And they feature the vast cast of one. It's just one guy narrating and sort of doing some voices sometimes. Like he's telling you a story, get it? Dear husband, don't you wish we could have a child whom we could love? I remember when as a kid whenever cartoons like this would come on, I'd immediately shut them off because I hated them. This is also another kind of funny connection to Bevanfield and Dingo, since they also did video storybooks, though Bevanfields are still animated. You know, if you want to call that animation. So our singular voice in this cartoon is Jeffrey Matthews. You might remember him from... The other Bevanfield tell me a crappy stories. Well, I hope this guy keeps his energy at a zero. I wouldn't want these to feel too disconnected from the other Bevanfield tunes. Once, long, long ago, in a small village, there lived a man and his wife. Perfect. They had just about everything in the world they could ask for. Except one thing. A reason to be standing there smiling like idiots. Don't you wish we could have a child whom we could love? But then again, I don't think anyone is capable of love in this horrid, barely animated world. And the husband replied, well, yes, if you do. The husband and wife always agreed on everything. Yes, they were truly the world's most dull couple, which is why they received the Bevanfield Award for Excellence in Boredom. Now behind their cottage was a beautiful garden. Unfortunately, the garden was surrounded by a very high wall, which no one dared to climb, because the garden belonged to a bad-tempered witch. I don't think you need to have a bad temper to not want people climbing over your wall to get into your garden. <laughs> wow, Mr. Boring is a head twice the size of his wife's and she is overlapping part of the windowsill and curtain while looking like the audience for this movie, longing for death. Anyway, the witch next door was apparently Sindel, who really needs more in her life as she just stands around ominously rubbing her hands at her cabbages. Apart from being a keen gardener, she was also very vain. She's so vain, she probably thinks this garden's about her. Well, it kind of is, I guess, if she planted it. She was very concerned about how she looked. She drank plenty of carrot juice for the vitamins it she cared about her health and tried to look presentable. Ugh, oh, she is evil! 
Magic mirror on the wall, who is the lamest of them all? Your boring neighbors I see, standing around doing nothing with glee. She put apricot peel on her cheeks to keep her skin soft, and she placed slices of cucumber over her eyes to keep them young looking. Well, I tell ya, that's a sight right there. We could probably call the rest of the movie off, we're not topping that. She really was very vain indeed. Yes, no one has ever been more vain than this. Oh, please do keep having dead inside Mrs. Boring keep popping into the window with her cell misaligned. It's wonderful. Oh, how delicious that salad looks thought the wife to herself. I wonder if I will ever be able to eat some. So maybe ask your neighbor about working something out to get some then? So do you think the Borings are good neighbors to the witch normally? Now, at mealtimes, her husband would eat chicken. Wow, he just plows into an entire chicken by himself. Bevanfield Sam Elliott is a real Rocket Robin Hood friar talk. While his wife ate nothing at all. So truly, this is the greatest relationship of all time, then. She was thinking of all the lovely, crunchy, fresh, green, tempting salad. Yeah, she was kind of weird that way. Mmm, chocolate. But then again, cabbages. Eventually, her husband noticed how thin and pale his wife had become. So you're seriously telling us that it took multiple sessions of this for him to notice his wife not eating? And we're supposed to think the witch is the one full of herself because she puts cucumber on her eyes? I didn't want to bother you, but if I cannot eat some of that fresh, green, crispy, crunchy salad in the witch's garden, I believe I will surely die. Oh, well, yeah, that seems reasonable. I'm glad, too, that she didn't want to bother Pigstash with this life-or-death situation, apparently. She was just gonna wither away. The husband thought about this and became very worried. After several days, <sighs> the husband noticed that his wife was even thinner. I know what I must do. <coughs> Nothing at all. After several more days, the man realized his wife's corpse was starting to rot. Honey, he said, you mind not rotting while I'm trying to eat? I will climb into the witch's garden and bring you some salad. Or, you know, just go over to your neighbors and ask about it instead of being a thieving jerk. Ooh, look at his sneaking. Those cabbages will never know what hit him. The wife couldn't wait to eat the salad. I'm so shocked! I didn't know girls ate food! I believe I need more of this fresh, green, crispy, crunchy salad. I'd say she shouldn't talk with her mouth full, but I guess she's not really talking, is she? So Mr. Boring repeats his salad-stealing animations, while the wife repeats her I-want-everything-outside-this-house-dead look. Bevanfield has such Sights to show you. I'm glad they went all out and got some stock sounds of women. He heard from behind him a terrible scream. And look at how concerned his wife was. How dare you come into my garden and steal my salad? The poor husband shook with terror. Why is it poor husband? It should be poor witch. The witch immediately did something horrible. She put up a too bad neighbor's sign. I will let you take as much salad as you like, provided you promise me one thing. When your wife has a child, you must give it to me. Yeah, sure. Little does she know I'm impotent. My wife ain't ever no kid. <laughs> Man, free food and someone to watch the kids? Living next to a witch is the best! And she ate as much as she could. She'd better get atten. She's got some long-haired babies to shoot out. When she had finished, she said, Do you think, dear husband, I could have some more? More? You want more? But it turns out her husband was turned to stone, and it was her turn to ignore the world around her as she ate. The husband and wife had their first baby. 
They named her Salad. They really did, sort of, as the name Rapunzel was originally derived from a plant. Remember our deal, darling? Oh, oh yeah, funny story there, honey. I paid for your salad with a baby. Wow, that's the first shrewd deal you've ever made. What? So Rapunzel grew up really quick because we just wasted about half of the runtime on her boring parents. Suddenly, Sindel realized even with all her cucumbers, her daughter is just getting way too hot. Well, according to the story anyway, and threw her into a tower, which only has a top floor. And she didn't even have to consult her mirror about the hotness ratings first. I kind of wonder though, did the witch magic up this tower? I'm guessing not because she had to grow her garden normally. So she must have had to hire some workers to build this and constantly tell them, yeah, seriously, I don't want any other floors or exits. When I bring you your meals, let down that pretty blonde hair of yours. Oh wow, usually I freeze the characters in a silly mid-blink, but they did it for me here. Also, Rapunzel's hair apparently really grew quite quickly on their little trip over to the tower. Why did the witch want a daughter anyway? To sew things for her? Paying a seamstress would have been a lot less time and effort than raising a baby for this. And now she has to walk out into the middle of the woods and climb up her hair just to feed her. And let's not forget the cost of the fire hazard tower. This witch really did not think this through. I hate to say it, but I think the Borings really got one over on their poor headstrong neighbor again. She also grew very hungry and looked forward to her meal times. Yep, she really took after her birth parents, I guess. I'm glad Rapunzel has a little hook for her hair, though, so they aren't just pulling on her head. I guess the witch at least thought of one thing. Rapunzel would sadly pull up her hair. Mmm, yeah, sadly. One day, a prince was riding through the forest, and he stopped at the base of the tower. Wow, it's truly the siren's call. Where in the world is that amazing voice coming from? Could it be coming from the only structure in sight that I'm right in front of? But seeing no one among the trees, he shrugged his shoulders and said, Oh well. Why is everyone in this movie brain dead? He returned the next day and hid behind a tree. This guy really knows how to get to the bottom of things. Should I try calling out to the singer? Nah, stalking them is the best thing to do. I like the way you think. My too. We're a wonderful team. Alright, hit him in the head, right between the eyes. <laughs> Good shot. There's another one for the fire. So Prince Poppycock learns the secret of communication by spying on the witch getting into the tower. Rapunzel, let down your hair. <gasps> Rapunzel, let down your hair. Hello, said Rapunzel, rather shocked. I'd say she probably should have noticed the prince's voice being different than the witch's, but I guess in this movie's case, they all sound the same. And of course, upon seeing such beauty, the prince of dweebs immediately fell in love. I hope you don't mind my coming up here. Not at all, replied Rapunzel. That's good, <laughs> said the prince, who was still rather puffed out. Wow! He's thick and in bad shape, too! Rapunzel would be stupid not to marry him! Now let's talk about all we have in common. Anyway, they're in love for sure. He's gonna go get a ladder. Which is much quicker than some versions where the stupid prince just keeps bringing her silk to weave into a ladder. So score one for Prince Puddinhead. The next day, the witch came to the bottom of the tower as usual. Rapunzel was surprised to see her. Apparently, the thought of looking at the person at the base of the tower before they climb up was beyond her. 
You're much lighter than him. Loose lips sink ships, Rapunzel, you idiot! What did you say? You've had someone up here. That's it! You're grounded! Oh! The witch took a pair of scissors and cut off poor Rapunzel's plait of hair. The witch hung the plait by the window. Yeah, if they can just cut off a large amount of her hair and tie it to the hook, that might have been an escape plan too. And now Blabbermouth Rapunzel has lost her sweet pad. Hope she's happy. Mmm, she probably is. In some versions of the story, the stupid prince couldn't wait to bang her, and their escape plan takes so long that it's Rapunzel's pregnant belly that gives them away. This is truly the story of brainless people who are really slow. Anyway, Rapunzel gets a resort island all to herself now. Guess it all worked out. Meanwhile, the witch waits to pull a hilarious prank on the Prince of Fools. The witch unhooked the plait of hair, and the prince fell to the ground, tearing his trousers. The witch roared with laughter until she suddenly realized that now she had no way of getting down from the tower. And the moral of the story is... Think ahead, or think at all. The witch could have just sold some of her produce and paid a seamstress. Would have saved herself a lot of grief. Also, another fun fact about some original versions of the story is when the prince falls from the tower, he gets blinded until he finds Rapunzel and the twins she had in the woods. It's lucky he wasn't blinded here, though, I guess, as he just follows her hair to Rapunzel Island. And she really must have magic hair growing powers, as she's got quite a lot back already. <laughs> <laughs> and then the prince apparently turned into Statler and Waldorf. He took her home to meet his parents. And they hated this weird magic hair girl who had an eye falling off her head. <laughs> and the witch died up in the tower. Ah, the perfect ending. So of course it doesn't end there. No, for some asinine reason, the movie suddenly thinks we need to check back in with the Borings. For good reason, though, as this lets them show us a bunch of recycled animation as they realize that the witch is away and steal more of her vegetables and start taking care of her garden. You'd think these doofuses might eventually think of starting a garden of their own, but that's against this movie's anti-thought theme. My daughter I had to give up. Guess not. I just care about eating salads. And it sure is wonderful that their stupid way of life has really agreed with them as they haven't aged a day even though their daughter is off getting married now. You might be expecting something like them getting to meet Rapunzel, but no, that'd require new animation and they're not doing that. <gasps> We do hear, though, that they're invited to Rapunzel's wedding, so I guess Rapunzel did meet them at some point. So, is there a point to this? Wouldn't it be a good idea if you stayed behind and looked after the garden? He has to miss their daughter's wedding to watch over a stolen garden. I'd say this was mean if he wasn't the tool who gave up their baby for some cabbage in the first place. And that is the real end. Really farted to a finish there. You'd think the movie was just looping on itself if you weren't paying close attention. But really, more versions of the story should end with Rapunzel's parents discussing a garden. This is just such a lazy cartoon. It's got that classic Bevanfield pacing, meaning it has no pace and feels like it's going forever. There's just large parts where no one is saying anything, and over half of the movie is about the parents stealing vegetables! And that's when Fairless realized he had accomplished nothing with this review. Oh, drat, he said. <sighs> then he shrugged. No, we don't actually need to show the shrugging, we'll just say he shrugged. 
Uh, off to my neighbor's garden! What's your opinion about? Universal suitable for all? This isn't even suitable for the Earth, let alone the universe!